Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with part two of our Wargaming and Miniature video where we're doing the Roman Marching Fort. Uh, we oh, Okay, so what we did last night was 12-inch EPVC base. Okay, we got the 12-inch base. We got the three layers of cork. We have the bajillion uh, shish kebab skewers and we've got the uh, wooden I don't know what they call those hobby sticks um, glued along there for support now we've allowed this to dry overnight um, I got home from work not too long ago and I went ahead and put a bead of Elmer's glue in there that was probably two hours ago that's almost completely dry uh, as you can see I got a new thing of E6000 that's for later when I go to assemble some of my new models okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our handy dandy dry decks spackling you can get a tub of this this is like uh, 32 ounces uh, what is that a quart um, pint? What is this? A quart? Yeah, I don't know. We know what that is. This is um, like five bucks, right? It goes on pink, dries white. Uh, this is going to be fairly messy, so I laid down some boards and stuff like that. Let's get my models out of the way because we don't want them to get messy. Let's go ahead and open this up. Primarily, I'm going to be using my finger. I'm going to be using my Mark I finger applicator. And I don't know if the camera is in a really good spot for you to see. Okay, let me see. Maybe if I, maybe if I just a little bit. There we go. That might be better for you. So I just reach in, scoop this up, and then what I'm going to do is I'm covering the cork with this uh, plaster, and when it dries, it basically will have filled up all the different uh, cracks and crevices in the cork right it'll also give it a little bit of a texture I'm not too concerned with the top the top is gonna be very thin it can be as thin as I want because remember I'm still gonna I still have to grit and flock this okay so you're not and then any seams or creases uh, between any of the cut pieces of cork uh, you can fill that in super easy with the spackle that's what it's designed for right is for uh, repairing patchwork in your walls and you know on your drywall and stuff like that okay and then I get it right up next to the uh, wood okay let me do the tops here and I'll be right back okay enough of the top is done now what we're going to do is we're going to continue on, but now I'm going to make sure that I get um, the slopes covered. And I want to make sure that I make it fairly smooth so that it looks like it's an even transition all the way down. Now, if it's not, that's okay. If there wind, if there winds up being uh, terraces, that's okay. But I'm just, but I am trying to avoid the terraces. Uh, by filling in and make and making it like just a gradual slope up the hill so there's going to be more putty in certain areas and less putty in others to give it that gradual and don't worry about it getting all over your fingers and stuff uh, before it dries you can wash it off with water after it dries that's a different story all right let me get all the insides and then I'll be back Okay, so now I'm going to pull this up so you can kind of see what's going on here. So you can see the inside slope and how the uh, plaster kind of fills in any imperfections in the, in the slope. Now, I really filled it in in certain areas and didn't fill it in in certain other areas. Let's not stop here. Let's continue. Okay, you can see that I've missed a spot like right along in there I need to hit that all right now because this is EPVC and it's not gonna hold uh, glue very well 
I'm going to put some of this spackling on here. I'm going to make it super thin uh, just so that I can put some gl grit in the center of the compound uh, and it'll stick to the it'll stick to the what do you call it? Spackle. And the spackle sticks to the EPVC pretty well. Now I am going to put uh, all the way out the uh, the door here, but I've got something special lined up for the door, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the sides here, and then when I get ready to do the outside, I'll uh, I'll be right back. Okay, now before I jump to the outside, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands real quick. And I'll be right back. All right, now before now before we get to see how easy that came off. Now before we do the outside, I want to do something special for the door. Well, guess what? I've got these hobby sticks. I've had them. I just grabbed a whole chunk of change right there. Doesn't matter what they are. I'm going to take some Elmer's. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to intermix it along the floor of this walkway right here. Uh, it's going to basically kind of blend with the spackle which is fine as you can see I put way probably way too much but that's okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these straights and we're gonna lay them in there side by side pushing them down into the glue allowing a little bit of very small gap between them that's mainly for the paint when we go into painting them I don't want to use any of the crooked ones I want to use all perfectly straight ones and unfortunately though that bag of sticks does come with quite a few crooked ones sift through them until you get to all the straight ones you get a bag of like 500 sticks for two bucks three bucks Okay, let me lay all these sticks down. I'll be right back. Okay, so now you got this doorway that leads into the compound. I'm going to kind of just rub on it. Whoa, that one went a slide. Kind of straightening them up a little bit. Just rubbing on some of the excess glue. Okay, there we go. Now, I need to take uh, my putty, and I, as you can see, it's already starting to dry up here. You can see it's starting to turn white. I need to hit the sides of these, but I'm going to go up and cover the bottoms of these poles. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, now I hope uh, I got the camera in a good spot. We're going to scoop up some like we normally, like, like we do, and... I might have to stand this up, and if I do, then you're not seeing anything on camera. All right, guys, I didn't really technically lower the camera. What I did was I re-angled the camera so that when I tilt my project upwards like this, you can see that I'm just laying where I'm putting the foam, the foam, where I'm putting the spackle or the plaster. Um, I'm filling in cracks, obviously, but I'm also making sure that I go up above the wood line you know the line where the wood meets the cork I'm going above that to make it look like first of all I'm going straight making a straight edge and then I'm also uh, leveling out the wall the berm or the what do you call it yeah I guess it's a berm Okay, so what you see now is the wood all looks like it's in, like it's shoved down inside the uh, spackle, right? Well, that gives you that impression that it's jammed into the ground. Now, once I go to paint it and everything, it'll it's going to look good. Okay, so let me get all the outside edges done like this, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, so right now what you can see is, I don't know if you can see this, but I got the plaster on all four sides all the way up to over the wood palisade, right? So it looks like the wood is shoved into the dirt. 
And but I still have to obviously I still well, okay, that's some that's some mean putty work coming through there. Alright, so uh I still need to paint it obviously and then put like some uh, not gloss, uh, flock, but what's the word I'm looking for? Um, grit and then flock, and it'll be pretty much done. Oh, I need to, I'll need to paint the wood and stuff like that. There's some things I need to paint. I know this is wood color already, but I'm gonna paint it and then paint it as in timbers. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is set this down, let this dry. Uh, that'll take a good hour probably to dry, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys. We are going to now start to do the grit uh, before I paint. Uh, to do grit, I'm going to need, because this is a large project, there's going to be a lot of grit on this. Um, what I need to do is use a larger bowl. I'm just using a coffee cup instead of my traditional or standard um, paint palette. Uh, so, in this bowl, what I'm going to do is add some PVA. So, I'm going to get out my, whoa, what is this? I'm going to pour some PVA into the bowl, or into the cup, actually. There you go, two big clumps. And then I'm going to add water, an equal amount of water. Could have used a sink or something. Okay. Didn't think I needed to use a sink. Did I keep that one? Now I have a fairly large brush because I'm trying to cover a large area in a quick amount of time. So now I stir this up. PVA and water. All right, this looks like it's going to be a good amount. Um, I don't know if you can see into there how much I've mixed up, but it's about a half an inch worth. Okay, that looks good. And then I've got my grit right here. It's my mixture. It's my sand and, and talus mix. And then I've also got my box here. Uh, this is a, sometimes I've painted in this box. Sometimes I've done other things in this box, but it's big enough to, so that it, I'll be able to cover it without it. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Without spilling it all over the place. So we're going to do the insides. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just taking the Elmer's and water mix and I'm just painting one complete side all the way in, mostly just the top, a little bit of the slope as well. There we go. And I'm just going to sprinkle all my sand and stone mixture on there. And what I normally do is I let this, there we go. See, I moved it up so that it would get up there. I normally just let that sit for a couple of minutes before I shake it off. But because I'm not going for a really super thick coating on this, I'm just going to shake whatever off I can right now. Oh, I am running out of glue. That I made a good choice. This is like the right, perfect amount that I needed for the. Oh, it's a good eyeballer. I mean, there's very little left in there. There's still some in there, but it's just very little. Okay, we need to make sure all the wood, bottoms of the woods, is covered, so, so that it will look like it's stuck in the dirt. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm going to let that sit for just a moment, and then we'll shake it off. All right, I'm going to set that off to the side just for a moment. I'm going to let it dry, probably about 30 minutes or so. 
and then we're going to go outside. Um, I'm going to spray it completely down with brown. Okay, it's going to be completely brown when I'm done with the spray. And then once that dries, we'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to do a, got a special treat for you. Now, we're going to be doing the uh, gateways. And I need, with my hobby sticks, all I needed was four of them. I'm going to cut them down to uh, this length. But instead of using my traditional hobby knife, I've actually got the Series 2 knives. Uh, I just saw them at, at um, Hobby Lobby today when I went there to get uh, my new E6000. And when I went there, I noticed that they had the Series 2 blades. Uh, and apparently the Series 2 are supposed to be... Okay. Zir zirconium nitrate coated blade. So it's supposed to be like a diamond. Well, a fake diamond. But a diamond nonetheless. Okay, I'm having an issue getting in there. So let's use the old blade. To get the new blade container out. If you look at it, it's got like a golden sheen to the... Well, you can't see it now. But it's got like a golden edge to its blade. All right. So let's cut these all to length. All right. So I'm going to make some crisscrosses. And I got a, a, an actual twig. Uh, this is an actual twig. I found one that was about the right size for my soldiers. Uh, I and this one has some bark still on it, but it also has like this extra tree branch that's sticking out. I left that because I want this to look like a larger piece of timber. Okay. Now what they normally do is they take these um, beams that they make and they would sharpen... The point. Now it doesn't have to be a very sharp point. I'm just just like as if they took the axe to it a couple of times. All right. Now on our perfectly factory squared off uh, post, what I need to do is just every now and then, like I'm rolling this in my finger and I'm trimming off a little bit of the uh, sharp edge. It makes it look like it was actually cut from a tree or a timber by hand and not factory created. So I just trim a little bit of the sharp edges off. Not all of them, just a little bit. Maybe just one little chunk out of each of the four corners just to give it a just to give it a natural look. There we go. Just a little bit of life to them. So I'm going to take my E6000. I probably could take Elmer's as well. You could use either one, but I'm just going to use the E6000 because it dries a lot faster. And I'm going to make X's. I'm going to make a couple of X's. So just a little bit of glue on there. We're going to coat both pieces of wood with the E6000. Okay. Let it dry just a little bit before pressing it home. Okay, so now we want to make that like a perfect X. It doesn't have to be. But I'm going to use my little one inch square here to help me. Like this will go from this corner to this corner and this one will go from this corner to this corner. So that will actually give me almost a perfect X. Alright, now let me um, clean up a little bit, let this dry, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I'm using a paper towel here. Uh, this is going to allow, instead of doing it over here, this is going to allow the, when I stand this, when I stand this up, I need a flat paper towel. Okay, so when I, when I prop this up, uh, it won't slide on the cutting board because it'll grip into the paper towel and it won't want to slide. Okay, so now I need to get my E6000. And what we're going to do is we're going to put 
a little bit on the v-neck of my uh, little deal there. And then I'm going to take my cross beam and I'm going to place it down inside there. And I'm going to angle it so that it looks like it's perpendicular to the angle. So it's, you know, you got to do it off at a little bit of an angle there. Now I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I lift it up with this one and put this other one on there. I want it to be fairly dry and finished before. Now you can go a little bit further on. Uh, you could always like take a little piece of string thread, wrap it around that both ways, kind of and tighten it up, and make it like a, as if it was really made, you know, maybe with a little bit of rope, but you're using thread. Or if you wanted to, you could take like a little needle or a paper clip and drive it through there to make it seem like it was actually nailed together. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to use the glue. Once this is, um, believe it or not, <laughs> I know this is crazy. Once this is dry, um, I am going to spray paint it brown, uh, just like, just like I did the fort. And then I'm going to have to go back in and paint this wood color. And you're saying, well, that's crazy because it's already wood. I know, but it's the, the wood color isn't, doesn't look right at this scale. So I've got to repaint it. So we're going to give that about five, 10 minutes, and then I'm going to lift it up and do this one. And then once, once I do that one, then I'll bring the uh, fort in. You'll see what it looks like. All right. So that is the fort drying, right? You can see how dark brown it is and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and put the paint away. Uh, once this is dry, which it's going to take a minute to dry, that sand is going to be sealed in there because this paint's going to also be an adherent. And so it's going to be sealed in nice and tight. I'm going to go back and over it and dry brush everything. I'm going to dry brush the wood. I'm going to look how beautiful that looks. I like the way it came out. It's looking good. All right. And this is the gate post. I've already painted this. I'm waiting for this to dry as well. Um, this, it's supposed to be flat. You can see it's still glossy. So once it turns completely flat, you know it's okay to be handled. Still glossy, waiting for it to, and I can smell it too. Um, this piece, I could probably touch the wood because the wood's probably already dry. This piece is going to be the one that actually serves as like the gateway. You know, it goes down inside. Actually, I could turn it around. Like right there. And that serves as like um, uh, like a door. Okay, so we're going to let this set off to the side, let that dry, we're going to let this dry, and uh, once it's dry and I start doing the dry brushing, we'll be back. All right, guys, welcome back. We are getting ready to do the dry brushing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush the dirt areas with this raw sienna. Um, <clears throat> that'll give the... What color is this? flat brown it'll give that flat brown a, a contrast okay but not to the point where it's so light that it looks white I want it to still look brown and so we're using the raw sienna now what I'm going to do is just put a just a little bit in the center palette okay if I need more I can always add more later And I'm going to use my brush that I was using earlier, right? So now we're just going to dab a little bit on the brush. I'm going to wipe majority of it off onto the palette, okay? And then I'm just going to lightly stroke it onto. everything that's supposed to be dirt or grass. All right, now, without even cleaning the brush, you can kind of see how the, there's a two-tone look on all the, the dirt. Um, 
that's going to be disguised when I put grass all over everything as well. Okay, so that was the raw sienna color. It's kind of a lighter brown. Okay, so now we're going to do teddy bear tan. Teddy bear tan is what I'm going to use on the wood. That's even even a lighter color, and that's going to go on the wood. Um, I'm going to put it right in the same palette with the leftover raw sienna. It's going to darken it up initially. But I'm not worried. I'm not even going to clean the brush. What's going to happen is this teddy bear tan is going to wind up getting a little bit diluted. Not a lot, just a little bit. So I just take this and I stroke it across my my wood. Now I'm trying to do across, not up and down, because if you go up and down, you would get in between the wood, and you can right now you can kind of see the dark brown inside the wood, right? And you don't want you want that effect. You don't want to lose that. There you go. Look at that. All right. Let me do all four sides, and I'll be right back. All right, guys. So what you can see here, what you can see here is I got the we got the road painted. I got the walls, the, the palisades painted. I got the dry brush here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to go in and add some grass texture to it, and we'll be really close to finish. I think I might seal it before I do the grass. I'll let you know, but I'm going to let it dry first. Be right back. All right, guys, before I get too far into it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a matte finish as well. And then once that dries, then we'll do the grass. Because I don't want to put a matte finish on top of the grass. Uh, it'll, it'll tighten everything up, and it'll make the grass look... It won't make the grass look well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the matte finish first, then we'll do the grass. All right, guys, now what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and finish this thing up the uh the what do you call it the dull coat that i sprayed on it's not really dull coat it's a matte finish uh really sealed everything up nice and tight like it like it like it okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a two-tone grass on this i'm going to use my my um field grass which is uh, and then i'm going to use some blended turf that is just plain green so we're going to do a little bit of a little bit of the gold, golden grass, the brown grass. What is it called? Burnt, burnt grass, and then, uh, and then mostly green. Uh, the burnt grass I'm just going to put in a few locations, nothing, just to give it a little contrast. Okay, I mixed up some glue. Put some right there. Put some maybe right there. Put some maybe right there. Getting the idea, right? I'm just putting a, an odd amount on, just in different places. Okay, these will all be on the inside. Now I'll just take the block and I'll just sprinkle it on. Now this is all on the inside. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to give that a, a shake. There we go. And then you see we got a little bit of green here and there and there and there and there and there. Okay, now I want to do the same to the outside. Not a whole lot, just... All right, so now the gold or the burnt grass is finished. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add quite a bit of uh, blended turf. I mean, almost over the entire piece. There's going to be very little of the brown showing through. Uh, but I don't want to be excessive. So here we go. Mix this glue up a little bit better. Okay, and as you can see, I haven't shake, I haven't taken any of that off of there yet. Okay, so that's the first coat of the green. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give that just a few moments to allow the flock to soak down into the glue before I shake it off. Okay, so let's, let me do that. I'll be right back. All right, so it's been about four or five minutes. Uh, you can kind of see how some of this is starting to turn dark. That's it soaking into the Elmer's. So I've shaken this out, and this is what it looks like. You got kind of that uh, tritone, right? You got the the green from the blended turf. You've got the dark green from the uh, burnt grass. You also have the uh, brown from the spray, and then you also have the sienna from the dry brush. So now what we're going to do is we're going to flock the outside edges okay we're going to go ahead and add some more flock to this we're going to use the dark green and once i get all that done i'll clean up a little bit and you'll get to see the money shot all right guys this is the money shot this is the fort uh and it is finished uh, do I want to add any towers to it or anything like that? I don't think I'm going to. I might put some tents or a keep on the inside just for, you know, just for looks, but um, I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. And uh, what I did was I put my Roman soldiers up there so you can see them in front of the berm for scale, right? And then you can see the Romans inside uh, behind the gate, behind the fence. Uh, how deep they are, and you can't even see them if you were down low. And then you got the guys up on the battlements that are just barely looking over, uh, defending there. And see, the, the uh, wood looks like it's stuck into the dirt, right? I mean, it's kind of dark on this side, but doesn't that look pretty good? You got your various lengths. Might have to do something with that guy. He's these get these couple seem like they might be just a little bit long. I don't know if you can see what I was pointing at, but there's this guy might be just a little bit too long. <laughs> That's all right. Tell me if you like it. Tell me if you want to see anything else. See anything more like this. Uh, if you want to share with me some of the terrain that you've built, go ahead and, uh, and if you've got it up on YouTube or something, give me a link. Uh, 
if you got if you got links to uh, photos or something like that, go ahead and put that in your comments. Um, I'd be like I'd like to see what other people are doing as well. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this video. It was really a blast making this, I, and I'm I'm really stoked about how good it came out. All right. So if you like this video, go ahead and like it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please do. And if you want to uh, help support the channel, go ahead and hit the PayPal me link in the description below. And uh, every donation to the channel helps out with my uh, terrain building projects. And uh, I'll catch you next time.